Okay, there I am, and uh, oh. just room for just room for me and the TV. Uh, Crystal, you're actually off to the side there. Should I sit over? Oh, well, just for okay. Good shot, Brendan's card. I, I don't think I'll okay. the shot. Okay. All right. It's just you at the screen. Yep. All right. Sorry, that's a tension. It's it's a twitch thing. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the three D. Model challenge with Tinkercad. I'm that guy with the Game Boy camera. You also also walking around as the Mickey DeLorean. In fact, some of these parts are 3D printed. Uh, uh, these are 3D printed parts you can find on a website called Thingiverse. Thingiverse is where you find plenty of 3D printed parts. How about we go there? Let's see. Uh, these uh, parts also from a Mandalorian model. Uh, you know, yeah, if you look closely. Yeah. But the, this helmet here was uh, made with foam. I thought it'd be uh, easier to wear. Yeah. And, uh, you know, okay. I'm a Macintosh guy, so this trackpad is going to be different, probably going to be different than usual. All right, so we go to Thingiverse. By the way, any, any questions about 3D printing? I have a 3D printer myself. Any uh, questions? I've had a 3D printer sitting around for like three or four years with putting oh. stuff on it and just letting it collect dust. Is it oh. beyond saving? Uh, I can't answer that. You just got to get it up and running again and get your filament, just get it up and running, uh, research the model, the make, uh, the recommended settings. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's all I can say. Uh, at least plug it in, see if it turns on. Then try and get it to work, get, get the filament. It's like, I get it off eBay, it's like 20 bucks. Yeah. All right. Uh, in, in the uh, downtown Central Library, they have a, uh, they have a, uh, a 3D printing center there, if you have small requests. All right, Crystal. Sorry, Max. All right, we got to take a and call. And it was a vague question with no real answer, but I just, I don't know. No. I don't know. OK, well, I'll try and get back into it if you can. OK, this is something I have on Thingiverse. Uh, it's uh, Action Abe from Fallout 3. Let me pull up Action Abe here. Yeah, Action Abe is a quest item, and I figured yeah, it's not on Thingiverse yet. Uh, can I make it myself? Sure. Uh, hold on. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, I noticed that it was just he looked blocky, simple objects. So I figured I could make it myself. Uh, get, 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 go away, ads. Okay. And, uh, all right. So that's Action Abe. This is Action Abe on Thingiverse. And if someone wanted to give me a dollar for it, they could tip me, so you can make model, you can make money off it. But uh, you gotta put out a lot of models, make it quality, yeah. So yeah, Thingiverse is for three model, three for free three D models. But uh, original works, yeah, you can probably copyright those and who knows, sell them yourself on uh, Etsy or something. So yes, yeah, so there is money in it. And yeah, if you want three, you can three D print Action Abe. Uh, uh, getting your 3D printer to work is, uh, well, that's always something else. But, uh, yeah, okay, and uh, let's go to Tinker This. I'm going to try and keep this quick. Okay, let's. Uh, Use a Mac usually. I don't use this uh, kind of a, P a PC like this, so I'm gonna try and uh, see I, if I can rotate this. All right, yeah. Okay. So yeah, Action Aid here. Uh, it's made up of uh, so squares and rectangles, a cylinder, two cylinders. Yeah, his head. If you can see there, it's like a it's like a square and uh, two uh, triangles to you know make that trapezoid figure. And the sword and the sword holster there, the sheath. Yeah, those are those are found on Thingiverse. Alright. So put that all together, got action Abe. So it's made up of uh, you know, trap, you know, triangles, blocks. Alright, you all get that? Okay, good. That's just a quick introduction to this. I also made a Trover from a game called Trover Saves the Universe. And this carry act. <gasps> yeah, so you can uh, download it. Yeah, I didn't think there was a there wasn't a carry act already on Thingiverse. 
Now you can print one and throw them at your friends. <laughs> okay, we good on uh, 3D printers and uh, 3D modeling? Okay, that we got that out of the way. And uh, all right, Crystal, you 3D print things, right? At, uh, at your work? Yeah, we do. Uh, what do you make? We make drone parts. Oh, yeah. And drone accessories. Okay, do you do any modeling? Huh? Do you do any 3D modeling? Or do you just find them? Yeah, I'm starting to now. Okay, good. Yeah. What, you, what software are you using? Tinkercad. Oh, Tinkercad. Yeah. Also. Uh, and then for more advanced ways, uh, use uh, Blender. There's also Shaper 3D. But uh, uh, Shaper 3D, I found out it, it has a subscription model to unlock all the cool features. I'm pretty yeah. sure I at some point, like, pirated ZBrush is one of them. Okay, we, I can't encourage piracy, so we're going to avoid that word. Or, but, uh, okay, let's make something new. Anyone have anything in mind? Let's make something completely new. Game Boy. <laughs> something not on Thingiverse. Okay. There are Game Boys all around. Uh, Game Pitbull. Gear. Game Gear. Okay, Sega Game Gear. It's, uh, I, think, I think the algorithm, the search algorithm here, uh, or the search on Thingiverse is broken. Okay, is there a Sega Game Gear on Thingiverse? Uh, there are stands, stands, battery, wall mounts, six button template. Oh, yeah, just to get the buttons. Okay, we're gonna make a game gear. Okay. All right. In a way, I'm still new to this, so. So yeah, that may or may not succeed. Take like a game gear. Okay, well, I'm gonna see how far we can get. Gotcha. All right, so let's start. Let's start with. The, all right, let's start with. Start with the. Uh, all right, start with the cube. All right, how how uh, big should our game gear be? Huge. All right, let's. Uh, all right, now 3D printing. All everything is measured in millimeters. I think uh, 150 millimeters is good. 52. That's like six inches. Okay. Okay, let's move that. All right, now we got some, uh, yeah, the Game Gear has uh, these round edges on it, so. I think there was a lawsuit some time ago. I think an Android phone tried to put round edges on it and Apple took them to court. Okay. So no round edges? Oh, well, we can have round edges. See if oh, we no, can do that. Basic geometry. <laughs> yeah, it's like a. Okay, all right. And look, uh, we have this uh, half sphere shape here. Okay. All right, I may or may not uh, finish this in time. I'll try and do it at home. Or I may or may not. Okay, all right. Okay. Come back later, see how far we get. How far I get. Take that nine degrees. Take that another nine degrees. Uh, Dunford, uh, how was uh, the San Diego Comic Fest last week a success? I would say it was a wonderful success, and we had a wonderful time hanging out and doing these things. I uh, even got a cameo from Jack from Jack in the Box. I heard he went to uh, war with some kind of McDonald's guy. Eh. I wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> I would, because I was there in the dark times. One of the four times. Okay. Uh, with the uh, limited capabilities here, you gotta get creative. Mm -hmm. right. And we 
use our mouse keys to, you know, or you know, keyboard keys to and try and get to move it by a millimeter. I think I better see a game gear here. Is, that one's, God, it's kind of hard to just call that a perfect rectangle. There's just some curves that stick out here. It's kind of thick. Yeah, that too. It thick. <laughs> All right. Well, if you got any other suggestions, what we can make if the game gear is boring, you can throw things at me. Snorlax. <laughs> There's already a lot of Snorlaxes out on the Thingiverse. I think I. Well, we can... What about Metapod? Metapod. How about Kakuna? Metapod was always superior. <laughs> I'm sure why the Simpsons fans have a fascination with, uh, with Kakuna now, just, just saying pardon me. Yeah, so we're in these uh, Simpsons meme groups, and right now they're posting all about Kakuna and Metapod. <laughs> Right, and uh, let's uh, try and increase the diameter there. Right, just to give this game gear some curves. Yeah, we like them thick and round. Yeah, curvy. Gear up. We can always uh, modify this later. Mm -hmm. Curvy Nightmare in Meme Land. I don't think that was for game here. Okay, can I duplicate this? Yeah, I think I can duplicate that. Under a free program, or do you have to? Pay it them? is. Okay. Open source. Yes. Okay. If you have any questions about whatever, want to just keep the conversation going. Go ahead. Say whatever. Do you recommend starting out with Tinkercad? Oh uh, yeah, it provides uh, plenty of shapes to play with. Okay. Uh, but yeah, there's uh, well, yeah, programs out. There's Blender which is what our friend Stephen Burns uh, uses. Alright. Yeah, if, uh, Stephen Burns, he does classes on 3D modeling. Uh, Matt, you know how to, how we can contact him? Uh, yes, you can, you know, easily find him on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, he's everywhere. Just look up Stephen Burns. He always runs the uh, wonderful digital arts workshops that we had at San Diego Comic Fest last weekend. Good. Uh, on his travels all around Southern California, doing, uh, uh, digital arts workshops. I believe you can find them on Instagram as Chrome Illusion. All right, uh, Chrome Illusion, and uh, I think he offers classes at Palomar College, right? I believe so. All right, so yeah, these are things you can take classes on. Okay, anyone learning anything? So you see, uh, kind of what we're doing here. Okay. It's looking pretty cute. Yeah. Again, you're gonna smile on it. <laughs> well, they have curves. All right, let's make the, yeah, making a huge game gear. Can you change the color to see like different layers or is it basically the default or whatever the uh, shape is? Yeah, I think it's a default, okay. you know. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, you know, he's, uh, I think each shape has its own color so you can tell what shape you used. So you got these things on the side that turns it, you know, 
from the top. This does it from the clockwise. Okay, I think we got some curvy, a curvy shape here. Okay, we're getting there. Yeah, yeah I think these, uh, it's got more, it's gained here as uh, rounder edges on the bottom. And this has more sharper edges on the top. All right, uh, let's see what, let's see what else we can do. We're ready yet, maybe we can design an entirely new game con handheld console. Okay, uh, how to, okay, how to, where to put a D-pad? Uh, you know, I think this, uh, it looks like a die that can work. Yeah, or the, like, the D-pad here. So enjoying uh, Pangea so far? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so we use this uh, square in the corner to rotate. All right, I think I can turn this pyramid on the side. Looks like we have our, our D-pad. All right, Crystal, you good? If you have any suggestions. For, for you know, and if you got any tips, you can throw them at me. Okay, so. Do you use more than one foot filament for your prints? Uh, all, all mine are, you know, PLA. It's, it's pretty standard. I don't know what, I forget what it stands for, but PLA is the standard filament. Uh, what, do you, what do you use? Yeah, Amp Pet. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's also uh, Pet G and uh, ABS. ABS. That's uh, that's uh, uh, yeah. That's got to use a higher heat level. And yeah, that's got to be heated even higher. Say you wanted to make the d-pad separately could you import an existing design to the current one? Oh yeah that's what I like about Tinkercad you can import existing designs just okay, okay. <laughs> what do you think of that d-cat it looks more like iron cross yeah oh boy iron cross is considered a hate symbol so huh, hope we don't get docked for that depends on how you look at it can you unify an object like that? Unify? Like uh, Like instead of four separate triangles, can you unify it together as one and control the height and the level uh, that way? I'd say select all of them and then from there you can con control the height. Let's see if we can do that. Okay, so we're all selected. Just select it all and raise it off the ground. Okay. And then this one, yeah, that uh, that gets it off the ground. Okay, so ah, so far, we're, this is an ugly looking Game Gear. Yeah, 
I think uh, we don't need these. Uh, I know I put these uh, in the corner here, these uh, half circle spheres. I think we can do without them for now. Yeah, I think uh, getting these uh, curves you know, on the side, that, that works. It's already worked. Okay. So I punch there. All right, now snap grid. You can, you know, kind of when we pull it and move it, we're doing it by these increments so far. We're doing it by one millimeter increments. Let's short that to half a millimeter. Okay, so. All right, and thank you, Fangia, for letting me use your computer and the Wi Fi. Okay, that's looking more like a game console. Now, let's just say we're trying to make a handheld based on the game gear. Going good so far. Okay, what else, what else? How about all these holes? I have an opportunity. Okay, and uh, that brings me to this next point. So let's say you want to put holes in, let's say an existing uh, block. You can do that. Yes, uh, we have a square. Actually, any object can, uh, you know, like make an empty space by using a hole here. So instead of, uh, you know, so it'll create uh, an empty, an open space around the, yeah. All right. Yeah, so this is, this is where the speaker holes go. Yeah, so when your printer does the, you know, it'll go, it'll make a circle, like an empty circle around it. it a little speaker hole speaker hole make these all one millimeter okay I'm trying to center I'm trying to get it centered back. All right, having fun? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, this is how, so yeah, is by doing this, putting in the speaker holes. Of course, this is for the impression of it. This isn't a real, uh, this isn't going to be a real gaming device. Okay, hard to get it uh, over the top here. Okay, and if this is going good, yeah, tell the uh, tell the staff if they want it back, or if I can come up with something else. Yeah, but yeah, thanks for letting me do this, Fangia. Learn anything? Okay, yeah, so I know these uh I know these cylinders don't need to be eleven millimeters, but uh no. but yeah, so that's so yeah, you notice how uh these have holes. Yeah, that's how we did it with the uh by by you know with our hole shape here so far. There's cylinder and but you can do it with any one. You can Yeah, you can uh, make a hole, you can uh Instead of a solid object, it can be an empty space, which is what we refer to as a hole. So it'll create a sphere, a circle shape in there. Like a, it'll print an empty sphere around it. Did can you, you put, like that bevel, have an empty hole and then put something inside uh, the hole? You know, that, that, I don't think so. Is that too complex for? Yeah, yes. You, you put a hole there, you just can't put, 
anything on the hole. Yeah, because it'll still read it as an empty space to print around. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. What else can we? How do you assign color? Color. You know what I do. You know, it's one of the things where I say I can be kind of a noob at this, so I cannot say all. You know, all the shapes here are have their own unique color. So, all right, let's uh, put in some text where it says "Game Gear." Of course, we have our text here. All right. Okay. You know, just got to raise it here so we can see it. Looks like it's already in red. Okay. Let's. Game Gear. Okay, let's have two texts here. Hey, we're making a game gear for those of you who just walked in. Right. Oh, so I think here is think our uh, think our handheld console here is coming along. Yeah, it's looking good, Brad. All right. here. You can see it. All right, uh, also you can also paint your 3D prints. I, I always order white filament so I can paint over it. Yeah, you know it's going to be red, order red. So yeah, filament comes in a lot of colors. There's even wood filament. Now we shrink that down. Yeah, if you hold down shift at uh, what you call it, uh, the ratio. Yeah, proportion, yeah. Oh. Keeps the proportions. Here. Uh, so far, this is an ugly game gear. All right, and we can choose a font. That's good. What's good? Sans mono. We have three. Oh. Okay, that's that looks okay. What's the difference between what you're able to do in Tinkercad versus Blender? No, Blender, there's just a lot of freedom if you know what, uh, what to do. Tinkercad, it provides you basic shapes. It provides you, oh, let's go through Tinkercad. All right, so we know our shapes here. We got our, seen our shapes. We got, and there's also more design, some designs like uh, got five, an A, birthday present. See, there's also a stormy cloud. Yeah, this looks like a pill. Yeah, th 3D print some pills. Yeah, and sell them on, and sell them, uh, you know. Be like, hey, I got, got your pills, got your hookup. Yeah, sell fake drugs with 3D printing. Oh, a snowflake. 
Yeah, it's like three. I think uh, new new things get added. Okay, we don't need snowflakes here in our model. Okay, sphere pattern. All right, so yeah, there's. That looks like uh, yeah, geometric, geometric shapes. Yeah, you can print a, you add a, it says helix, but it looks like a spring. Look, a super ellipse, it's, it's, it looks like a top, like a, like what Lee, Leonardo uses in Inception. Yeah, you can, yeah, try having a top, to add some Hebrew letters. Okay, uh, you know, since we got asked about uh, importing things, uh, let's just, for the heck of it, have an example of what to import. Uh, what's good on Thingiverse? Okay. Uh, can we uh, can we import this Pokeball for the heck of it? Okay. So a lot of file, a lot of uh, designs on Thingiverse. They come in parts, so. You print one part at a time, then you assemble them. They, the, the, you know, each page will have its instructions. So, okay, frame bottom. You know, yeah, let's import the buttons here. We can use them in this. Yeah. Give it a. Whoa, that's a big file. No, oh, I am not gonna. Oh, I'm <laughs> canceling that. No, no, no. 133 megs for that button. Okay. I'm curious, what does a button look like? Alright, so yeah, things you can print. Uh, hey, you can print uh, Joy Con grips if you have a 3D printer. Okay, let's, uh, let's get this button. Just this button. Okay, a good one. I want to take up space on here. Have you uploaded any of your own designs? Oh yes. Uh, like I mentioned before, I did Action Abe. That design. So I also put a carry act on uh, on Thingiverse. I also put uh, a Trover, a, ba a model based on Trover from Trover Saves Universe. And one of the guys who works at Squanch who makes it, uh, he liked it. Let's see, uh, explore, so designers. What's your tag? That guy with the Game Boy camera. Nice. Yeah, so there's a lot of designers here. Uh, a lot of these are detailed, a lot of these, you know, Tinkercad shapes. Question. Yes? When you say action A, you mean from Fallout 3? Yes. Go. I, uh, yeah, so. There wasn't a, an Action A 3D model to print. Yeah. Actually, let me show you another place to get some uh, 3D models to print. It's called the in-game model is pretty rough. <laughs> yeah. Nice but yeah, I went on thing Tinkercad made an Action A. It's called uh, Models Resource. There's a lot of video game models I get uploaded here daily. Okay, we, I don't think we can get what we want with Paper Mario here. So, uh, pick a game. Kingdom Hearts. Good enough. Oh, I think someone's been on here lately. Whatever. Yeah, so I'm going to show you a trick. So if you want to see a model in a game, next. So uh, pick a character. Come on, pick a character. Do Sora from Kingdom Hearts 2. Uh, since I see Sora from, oh, I'll just go with this Sora here. Yeah, here's one, one thing I have noticed about some of the 3D models on here. They always have their arms out. I think this is what you do when you make character models. You, you always have their arms out. Then they get programmed to move around. Okay, so uh, now we see download zip archive. Yeah, it looks like we downloaded it. Zip, uh, let's check out the zip contents real quick. 
Okay, so we just downloaded the a 3D model of Sora. We have his uh, P images. It's this this one right here you want to throw into your slicer program called Cura. Uh, okay, throw in an OBJ object into, into your slicer project. I use Cura. You know, there's a you got there. Anyone a slicer program is? Okay, so uh, again, this is one of the things you learn from the 3D printing uh, courses or panel. Someone does that. We're just focused on making models. So Cura is your slicer program. That's how you make your settings. So that's how you, uh, uh, you know, you import your model into Cura, and that's how you, uh, that's what how you tell your 3D printer how to print it. Like faster, slower, uh, this layer height, this layer height. Actually, recommended 0.2 millimeter basic. That, yeah. You can do 0 0.24 or 28 if you have a bigger print. It's just the uh, smaller the print, like even 0 0.08 millimeters. Yeah, the more detail your prints will turn out. In fact, even your nozzle size can determine how detailed your print is. Like the standard is 0.4 millimeters, but you can also get 0.2, which is uh, what you use on your. So if you have a Dungeons and Dragon night and you want to print out those figures, very detailed. Yeah, get a 0.2 millimeter nozzle. But you can get it, you can still do good on uh, 0.4 millimeters. All right, so download Cura. That tells your 3D printer what to, what to, how to, how to print it. Okay, let's import. I think these are in our imports or our downloads. Yeah, so yeah, button. Yeah, I wonder where Sora went. Okay, and Tinkercad has limits. It does uh, only goes up to 25 megabytes. So if you see uh, if you see what the file size is on Thingiverse, don't don't put it in in, in Tinkercad. Hello, welcome. We're having a 3D model challenge. Someone said to make a game gear. All right, where did our uh, button go? Yeah, so import a button. Uh, buried under our game gear here. Oh boy. When it comes to something oh, that needs uh, Here it is, here it is. It's, it's buried underneath. When it comes to something that's really detailed, like a cap that has to fit something, uh -huh. how do you know, like do you measure the object that you're trying to fit exact proportions to or is it just trial and error? Well, it can be trial and error, but it helps to have a ruler or uh, like a measuring or ruler in millimeters because that's how we usually do this. Oh, mm. These get printed. That's millimeters is a standard here. In fact, uh, my brother wanted me to uh, uh, make him a uh, like that cap for the for a heart pump because he told me that he, his paramedics he he manages paramedics they keep breaking these heart pump devices uh, because they have this monitor that's not protected. Yeah, he actually likes what I made him. Uh, but yeah, he's gotta, you know, uh, it always depends on what you wanna do, but yeah, gotta measure it uh, first and, you know, measure it in millimeters and get the shape right. Okay, so does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Because I'm just wondering if, like, you wanted to design, for example, a ring that's a wearable. A what? A, like ring. a ring? Oh, yeah. Well, you gotta, you know, get the circumference of your, or the diameter of your finger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, it's a, uh, well, I mean, you can measure it around with like a piece of string and then, you know, mark it. Mm -hmm. like, probably with some additional tolerance, you know, so yeah. it's not like exact, yeah. So there's a little bit of give. Okay, I got right. uh, I want to explore. Uh, maybe, I think Thingiverse has uh, maybe ring. Let's see, uh, some rings will have, uh, we'll say their sizes. Will this do it? A cat ring. Yeah, Crystal, you enjoying this? Yeah. Okay, so. Huh. So much fun. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, cat ring. Five and a half, six and a half, or five and a half, six and a half, seven, seven and a half, six. So, yeah, this cat ring actually lists out the different sizes. So, you know, if you go to the jewelry store, they will take your measurement of your finger. Yeah, so if you're getting married, you better know that ring size. Honey, what's your. 
Honey, I'm curious. Uh, how big is your finger? Yeah, what's your, what does a jeweler say when your ring size is? Honey, can you put on this five and a half ring? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, oh, that's, uh, oh, that's uh, too big. Put on this five ring or six ring. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so does that uh, answer your question about ring sizes? So yeah, get it measured in the, you know, always in millimeters. Okay, so we have our uh, button we imported from a Pokeball. That can be our, uh, that can be our Game Gear button here. Right, let's uh, lower this. So you know, we select it all by going outside. Yeah, I'm gonna put this on Thingiverse, call it the Fangia Crappy Game Gear. <laughs> don't worry, this is all on me. I don't mind taking responsibility for what. Or you can ask the audience what you should name it. Uh, what should we name this device? Uh, let's call it Fangear. Fan gear. Oh yeah, that's, that's, that sounds cute. Okay, uh, yeah, let's rename this. We're not going to make an exact game here, so we may as well make our own thing. Uh, fan gear. Uh, what? Uh, okay. What should we? What games are we going to put on it? Let's give this six buttons. Let's put Hogan's Castle on it. Hogan's Castle, like Hogan's Heroes, <laughs> with Hulk Hogan. <laughs> okay. Uh, battle through. Hulk Hogan's battle through three levels. <laughs> I, think, I think Mickey Mouse had a castle game. It's Mickey's Castle. Okay, Hogan's Castle. Uh, he's got a battle through Roddy Piper, the Iron Sheik, uh, to, sa to, to save Mr. T. <laughs> All right, MT. Let's get into this. I'm going to yeah. get you out of there. Yeah, if you follow the Iron Sheik's Twitter, you're going to love him more than Hulk Hogan. Anyone already do that? Follow the Sheik's Twitter? It's the best thing, it's the best Twitter ever. He gets, it's just, it's, if you know the Iron Sheik, he's saying the things you expect him to, and he says things that could probably get other people banned. <laughs> Dang. Are you looking at the Iron Sheik's Twitter? I'm checking it out. Let's see, Let's see if we can get yeah, some just don't Yeah, just don't recite it. Uh, oh, right, it's a PG stream probably, yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, we had, uh, you know, some of y'all might be under uh, 18 here. This Rest is family friendly. Success. Don't be a jabroni. Yes, uh, the Iron Sheik invented jabroni. Then he, I think he hung around the the Rock at a, you know, when he was younger, and now the Rock's the one who says jabroni. Okay, let's put a screen here. This man posts with surprising frequency. Yeah, I think the Iron Sheik was a uh, kind of pretty depressed a long time ago, but then he got on Twitter to reconnect with to connect with his fans, and now uh, his fans. Now they hate Hulk Hogan as much as he does. Wow. I don't know if his hatred of Hulk Hogan is kind of an act. Because even Hulk Hogan was in his documentary. Okay, we're going to put a screen here. This is so good. Even Hulk Hogan was in a documentary, and Hulk, and Hulk is saying, Hey, Sheik, I love you, man. Even Sheik is, once went on WWE Raw to be like, I make the Hulk a mania! Well, every hero needs a bad guy, and well, the Sheik filled it. When uh, Iran was, uh, uh, when uh, they had some issues, but fun fact: the Iron Sheik was actually the uh, bodyguard to the Shah of Iran. What? Yes, there's some lot. In fact, he uh, he left Iran because you know, uh, you know, you might hear some good how Iran was in the 70s. Yeah. How they were all wearing, how it was all westernized and looked pretty peaceful before the revolution. Right, it looked pretty chill. Uh, but there are some things about the Shah that just sound bad. In fact, uh, the Shah was there because, well, you know, he was, as he dealt with, as he was, uh, okay, we're getting political here, but we are getting political here. he was easier yeah. to deal with uh, with the U.S., so he was living like Caligula. Mm. But, of course, the revolution came, but before the revolution came, uh, the Iron Sheik, he actually thought the, Sh the Shah was going to kill him, so he got out of Iran. Oh, just so he ran. 
Yes, and he was also a champion amateur wrestler. Uh, one of the top three. And then when he came to America, well, before he got into pro wrestling, as the bad guy, uh, he actually trained our Olympic team. So, so they taught, so you know, back in high school, I was on the wrestling team. Oh, Dan Gable, he was one of the greatest wrestlers ever. Yeah, well, he was trained by the Iron Sheik when he went to the Olympics. Yeah. How did he get picked up? He just like showed up here and they're like, hey, you used to be a bodyguard. How about you train well, some Olympic athletes? Well, he was already an amateur athlete, so, you know, an amateur wrestler, so he but, was, so he was kind of set. Uh, he's, so he, 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 he had some prep. Yeah, so he knew people who'd get him into wrestling and then, wow. well, rest, well, he, the fa well, the, the baby faces need the heels and what's a better heel than a guy who acts like he's from Iran? I mean, he is from Iran, and he's, well, he, 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 in reality, he really likes America. He, he is a hundred, yeah, he's an American. Hmm. Yes, I know. Okay, want to talk more about 3D modeling or the Iron Sheik? <laughs> okay, let's talk about this, the Iron uh, Sheik. This has a little segue. Are you using Google SketchUp right now? Uh, it's called uh, Tinkercad. Tinkercad, okay. Uh, yeah, Do you so use this, Google Sketch for 3D yeah. modeling? I don't, I don't know. Just reminds me a lot of uh, SketchUp. It's nice. Uh, yeah, so Tinkercad, it's free to use. Uh, there are limits, but you can probably get a lot, of, a lot out of it. Sick. Uh, there's also Shaper 3D. Uh, there are plenty of guides on that, but well, plenty of the good stuff you gotta pay. You gotta pay to use. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Want to talk more about the Iron Sheik? Well, actually, I was just going to look up Hogan's Castle to make sure it's in a, a real, actual game. And it looks like it was. Oh, really? I just saw it referenced in some video once, uh, but now. Uh, there's Hogan's Alley. Hogan's Castle for Nintendo. Are you talking about Hogan's Castle or Hogan's Alley? Hogan's Castle. Okay. <laughs> okay. Kind of looks like the front of a Castlevania game, but it's just Hulk Hogan. Oh, okay. I think uh, that's a fan art. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, maybe Hulk Hogan should be in Super Smash Brothers. I mean, he's been in enough, you know, uh, video games. And the Iron Sheik. Oh, you're right. It's just fan art. Yeah. Oh, man. I know. Uh, Hogan's Alley. Yeah, you're right. I, I, that has nothing. I you know your stuff. I don't think that has anything to do with Hulk Hogan, Hogan's Alley. <laughs> All right, let's turn this. Like, let's, it does not. <laughs> all right. Let's put this in negative. 20 degrees. Yeah, because, you know, it's got a... Oh, you're making a game cartridge? Uh, making, uh, someone suggested a Game Gear and, uh, a Sega Game Gear. You know what that is? No. Yeah. Uh, Sega made a handheld to compete with the Game Boy. It had its issues, but I think it turned out pretty good. It looks a lot like a PSP. Kind of? Yeah. And yeah, we're calling it a fan gear. Kind of looks like a cross between a PSP and a, uh, and a Switch. It's a little bit like Switch, doesn't it? Yeah, just I to just, make that uh, like a. Well, yes, this is way before that. Oh my god, this is way before that. It's so chunky. This console is so chunky. <laughs> this the original game here. That is, this one is much more sleek. There's a is a much nicer design. Look at that. Yeah. Oh. Did you sign one? No, I said I don't. Know. Okay, that's kind of our screen and our buttons. Maybe we gonna hold this down and. So for the drum parts that you make, do you, is it, like, what, what kind of parts do you make for a drum? Like, what do they need? So you just like, like, sometimes you put, like, propeller bumper, so, like, you, if you crash into somebody, there's, like, bumpers. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's that, or you can, like, create, uh, like, camera holders. <laughs> I'm just wondering because I thought I was like, oh, you have a drone. Shouldn't it already be complete? Like, oh. what else would you add to it? Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, like kits. So it'll come like with a frame and like the flight controller and the motors, and then you just solder it all together. <laughs> yeah. You've seen like, have you seen like the videos of like people like doing like tricks and stuff with drones? Oh yeah. So, yeah, we, we make those drones. Oh okay. Yeah. Cool. 
Okay, uh, yeah, that's gonna be our screen there. Let's put our, all right, let's put, uh, what else can we take from the game gear? Okay, let's call it here. What do you think? This is the fan gear. Right, this is our handheld system. Excellent. Yeah. Fan gear 2.0. Yeah, so, okay, so we can rename it Fan. Oh, it has suspiciously uh, McDonald's color scheme. Yeah. Uh, let's just say we're using different shapes here, and each shape gets colors, so you know what to look for. Mm -hmm. yeah, so let's call it Fan Gear. All right, so now when you want to download it uh, for your 3D printer, yeah, you can either, you know, uh, click on a shape, or, oh boy, oops, sorry, export, and if you just do that, select the selected shape or everything in the design. Any download will be called the STL or the OBJ, either one works, but STL is a standard. Like if you're in 3D printing groups, someone might post uh, something they saw and be like, STL, STL, that's, Yo, go that's STL. the 3D printing file. In fact, if you go back to Thingiverse. Oh, there's the thing. Are you going to upload your design right now? You know, I, you know, I could uh, later to Thingiverse, but I can make it public on uh, you know, Tinkercad so people can toy with it. Yeah, we can make a kit and bring it here next year. Maybe. We'll take, how about next year we take new suggestions? Yeah. Okay, so on Thingiverse, uh, so if you want to make this Bulbasaur. Well, how does, how does Cura, like, how does Thingiverse and Cura, like, I don't get it. Okay, so, so, you know, Tinkercad, that's our modeling program, our CAD software. Anyway, there's others out there like uh, Shaper 3D also has its limits, but there it's got plenty of YouTube tutorials, so I gotta brush up on that before I do this at, uh, you know, uh, Ontario Comic Con. They said I could do a desktop thing since their internet's not good. Yeah, this is all in the, done, done in the browser, by the way. Okay, so then Cura. That, that's your slicer program. That tells your 3D printer how to 3D print it. You can even adjust the, the height, the speed, adjust the models. Yeah, so... Okay, so... Do you have a 3D printer with you today? Uh, I, no, 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 no. 3D printers, they're like as big as the TV here, maybe smaller. You leave those at home. Oh. Mm. No, I am not bringing a 3D printer to a convention. <laughs> no, no. That is an expensive yeah. thing to bring. Yeah, they kind of take a while to print, too. Maybe you could get a couple models out. Like, oh, and, of course, and also... How can... long does it usually take? Uh, the, it always depends. Like, that uh, carry act I showed, I mean, I forget it, maybe 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, this. How big is it? Oh, you know, like like 30 millimeters all around. 30 millimeters, like this. Here's a couple of times. Like, like uh, one inch, that's 25.4 millimeters, so, you know. And it takes about 30 minutes. To I think maybe close to an hour. 30 okay. minutes an hour, I forget. But yes, uh, if you want, I think I've tried to print Loki's uh, crown from that show. Uh, horns and the uh, crown, uh -huh. those are separate. Okay. Oh, that that took like that took like a day. <laughs> and also, uh, one thing I do, I call it Bobble Get In. Uh, Bobble Fan Hives. And yeah, this is something I do with, with 3D printers. Uh, I 3D printed the uh, all the, on Thingiverse. There are these oh, yeah. these are Fallout uh, bobbleheads. Oh, did okay. you get into an article for them? Oh yes. Oh, Max yeah. made a documentary. Uh, yes. I used to have, I had one from, uh, like, there was some limited edition of Fallout 3, I want to say, that my cousin got for me. And it came with this little lunchbox that had oh, the game and some art and a little uh, bobblehead. Fallout oh, bobblehead. Is, uh, okay, yeah. Oh. Hold on, that's it. I think that. Uh, okay, I think this has a link to the imager thing I, uh, Gamerant.com. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hold on. Let me just find me. Uh, yeah, it's like an imager thing I'm trying to find. Hundreds of uploads on Reddit. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. This one made Game Rant. Uh, so, yeah. I went around Los Angeles hiding bobbleheads. Because, you know, in the game, Fallout uh, 3 and 4, mm -hmm. yeah, 
Yeah, look for bobbleheads to increase your stats. I figured, yeah. what if I went to different cities and did that? Then put and use my Instagram social media to get people to find them. Mm, yeah, cool. you know, this guy, so some, yeah, someone sent this to a gaming Bible and that made an article. Yeah, you know, me and some two friends just did it for fun just to see Los Angeles. We had, we had some fun doing that. Cool. But yeah, and then we, then me and Brandon, this guy, uh, did it in Phoenix uh, back in December and, uh, yeah, then, then uh, yeah, uh, here's the thing. Uh, Kotaku has a, uh, you can get in contact with their journalists. They have a listing of all the journalists' emails. I put as many emails as I could in an email to see if they'll pick it up. And, well, one of them worked for Game Rant, and, yeah, it, it caught on. It made a lot of articles. Cool. That's so cool. Yeah. So that's one of the, yeah, that? so, yeah, with the so, yeah, how, how long does it take to make a Vault Boy here? Well, with my 3D printer, maybe, I don't know, maybe six hours. You know, with the uh, body, the head, and it's all with white filament, so gotta, so, you know, gotta paint it later. How hard was mm. the painting? Uh, not that bad, just get acrylic, pa acrylic paint. And it Michaels. sticks on pretty well with the right. standard filament. Okay, anything we want to add to our uh, fan gear here? Nope. All right, I think we're good. Uh, thanks for having me, uh, maybe I'll do this next year. That guy with the Game Boy camera. Thank, thank you, Twitch. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll put this on YouTube later. Woo! Sweet. Thanks. Okay. Wait, Max, I'll take a picture. All right, all right. Wait, 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 before you turn it off. Oh, it's a Twitch. Okay, that's Crystal. Thanks for joining me, Crystal. She's a French kiss today. Uh, Crystal, what's you your com what's your, what's your company? Oh, find me at Kinker Now. Kinker Now. <laughs> okay, let's end the Twitch stream. Oh, those shoes are sick. Thank you. I think those might have been, I think we ran into another guy earlier who said...